guys. It is Tuesday and I am making dinner. I have not had a productive day at all. I was kind of down in the dumps. My spirit was a little low. And honestly, I was going to lie down and just give in to it. But I'm like, uh-uh. I'm going to cook a nice hot meal for the kids. And as I'm doing this, a couple of things I wanted to bring up. For those of you that don't know, I had to have picked this up from somewhere. I just don't remember where. But if you peel your taters in the sink, put a grocery bag down. That way, all your peelings will go right in the bag. You just scoop it up. And toss it and I feel kind of arrogant even mentioning that because some of y'all might be like girl I've been doing that since I was born but here I am today old um sharing something that probably a whole bunch y'all already know another thing I wanted to mention or ask you guys when y'all peel y'all's potatoes do y'all go this away because I'm scared to. I've nicked myself doing this, so I now do this. Except at the booties. Around the booties, I'll do that. But how do y'all do it, guys? Do y'all go out or do y'all go up? I'm an up girl. And some of y'all might be like, well, dang, Mel, what keeps you from nicking yourself up here? I have. I ain't gonna lie. But not as much as I've nicked my knuckles doing it this way but yeah i'm making meatloaf tonight guys i know this intro is a little strange <sighs> i've been a little strange today ah but uh i want to make meatloaf with me soaking my taters in a little water bath just so they don't turn dark on me while I prep. I know I don't need to show anybody how to make mashed taters. The audacity of me, right? The nerve, Mel. Really? But, just in case, just in case we have some newbies to the potato world, you want to make sure you cut your pieces in uniform sizes that way they um cook even and some of your potatoes don't um break apart in the water when you're boiling them you guys how many of y'all slice your potatoes in your hand like this my mom used to do it like this i was always so stinking terrified of slicing my fingers off and i nicked myself plenty of times but I don't remember my mom ever nicking herself. How is that possible? I, st I still know people that will do like this or do like this. I'm like, mm -mm, I need my digits. See, those are the veterans. Those are the super moms. Those are the Wonder Woman moms that can do some stuff like that. I ain't one of them. I'm scary. back in the bowl just for a quick little rinse before I put them in my boiling salted water but since I'm doing things backwards and haven't even started my meatloaf <laughs> I'm gonna let them sit in here until I get the meatloaf in the oven so these are the ingredients I'm gonna use a pound and a half of ground beef and the other half a pound I'm gonna use for for making something for little dude I'm not sure he is not gonna eat this he's tried it he's gagged he's just he can't so I'll have the half a pound left but anywho uh into that I use oats 
I know some people use crackers, breadcrumbs. You do you. I use oats only because texturally I prefer the oats. I'm going to use about a quarter cup. Maybe a little more of onion depending on what my eyeball tells me. The same of bell pepper. Uh, one egg back there. See the huevito? I'm going to season with garlic powder and Longhorn Steakhouse. I usually use Lowry's or my Goya Sazon, but I hadn't used this in a meatloaf. And how can you go wrong with grill seasoning? And it smells very similar to my um, Lowry's. So I'm going to try this today. I add in ketchup and then I add worse than your sister sauce. And then for the top, I make a sauce using tomatoes little bit of yellow mustard and just a sploosh of um, pickle vinegar. Let's get to getting. Okay. So let's prep. Just my pound and a half of ground round for meatloaf. I prefer to use the 80-20, um, but I couldn't find any 80-20, so I have the 73-27. It should be okay. It should be okay. Now to this, I'm going to add some ketchup, and I don't really measure the ketchup. I just visually do that. We're going to add the worse than my sister sauce. Also, I just kind of eyeball it. I can't even tell you how much I'm putting in there. I did, what, nine or ten little shakes, which might equal, what, tablespoon? I don't know. But there's that. I eyeball it. I've been making meatloaf for a very long time, so that's what we're doing here. My Longhorn uh, seasoning or any seasoning of your choice, I just powder the top. Couple of times, we're going to powder the top, okay? I might actually garlic powder, same thing, no real measurement. Just powder the top, okay? Break in my egg. Okay. Now the oats, I do measure. I do a three-quarter cup of oats. And I measure my oats because if you get heavy-handed with them, it can be really thick and dry. And we ain't trying to do that. But we definitely need a binder. So... There's my three-quarter cup, okay. Now, I did forget to mention to you guys that I add a sploosh of milk, just a sploosh, okay, just a sploosh. And then, we get in here with your hands, y'all. And after I get everything mixed up and mushed, that's when I'll judge if it's looking like meatloaf does it look like it needs more seasoning more worse than your sister more anything and right before it's all mixed together i'm gonna add my veggies and a little salt i just want to kind of get this broke down in here a little bit okay This is when I start looking. Does it look like it needs a little touch of something? I think it does. Let's take a sniffy sniff. It smells like a hamburger patty with the ketchup in it. So we're going to add in a little more sauce, a little more spice. Okay, give it another little whirl. And honestly, this is how I do my meatloaf, by sight and smell, guys. I'll be sniffing raw meat to see if it smells like anything but raw meat. 
I gotta smell the spice and then I know the spice, the seasonings, and then I know that it'll taste good. Snippy sniff. Okay. Getting there, getting there. Maybe a little more. That's it. That's it. Now to this, I'm going to add, I did a half a cup of onion and a half a cup of bell pepper, making a whole cup of ingredient. So we're going to drop that in here. Now, honestly, I think it looks a little dry. So we're going to add a few more goopies of Worse Than Your Sister. And just a little bit more milk. Just a little. That's it. I don't have any recipes, guys. I just, I used to try and follow my mom's recipe to the T, and it never came out like hers. So I just started tweaking my own. And mine tastes okay. It doesn't taste like my mama's. Man, I wish it did, but. But. Can't all cook like mama. Now, in the past, I've sauteed the onion and bell pepper. But honestly, guys, after uh, the hoagies yesterday, I didn't want to do that again. So, at this point, I'm really not liking the color of it. It looks a little um, too pink. But I am going to add some salt and maybe one more sploosh of ketchup now I don't want to go too heavy handed on the ketchup because I am going to do the tomato sauce uh, gravy do you guys use tomato sauce on your meatloaf or do you all do a brown gravy? I've had both. I, I like both, but, you know, y'all know I'm sentimental and traditional. I stick with what I know. So that's this. We're going to take one more sniffy sniff. And it smells good. I smell... I smell everything I'm supposed to smell in there. Alrighty. So... Now we're going to take and transfer this into our pan. Ah, yes. The banana bread pan. Plop this sucker in here. Plop all this goodness in here. Shape it into a little loafy loaf. Nice and packed in. No air bubble in the middle. Okay. That is going to go into a 350 degree oven for... If I do one pound, I do like 45 minutes. But I'm doing a pound and a half, so I'm going to do an hour. Since I don't want to start my potatoes too soon, um, I've lowered my water, which has boiled twice already, to low. My potatoes are still soaking. Um, in about half an hour, I'll drop my potatoes into water. But right now, I'm making the second dinner of the household, which is Little Dude's... Ah, I got the wrong rice, which is Little Dude's Meat with Rice. Okay. Got the good one. Well, the right one. They're both good, but I got the right one. Yeah, I'm making him meat with rice because he's not, like I said, he's not going to touch meatloaf. And honestly, guys, y'all know I love him. Okay? Y'all know I love him. And God graced me with him for a reason. But some days, I don't feel like making two dinners. I don't. And some days, I don't want to eat the same thing. 
over and over and over again that we have to eat because of his um, sensory and texture situation. Any special needs parents out there know what I'm talking about. You either have to do the same thing, eat the same thing, go the same route, put on the same thing, watch the same thing. And some days, like today, when I have meatloaf on the brain, I just don't feel like it. But I'm not going to go get him fast food. I'm not going to have him eat hot dogs. He needs to have something. He needs to have something hot in his belly. And then I made broccoli, and sometimes he'll eat a little bit of broccoli. So if I can get a veggie in him with combination, hey, that's perfect. So... I'm just going to hush. I'm just kind of sensitive today, guys. Today, I felt very unproductive. Today was the first day in a long time where I had nothing to do. I had no insurance people to fight with, no doctors to seek out, no pharmacies to call, nothing health-wise to tend to because everything is in limbo. I've done it all. So I'm kind of just sitting here waiting, and I felt so useless. At least when I'm arguing with somebody, I'm doing something, right? But I just felt totally useless. I got up and I put it around and uh, really couldn't find much to do because, you know, I know this looks a mess. This is all clean. I was going to say, for the most part, the house is clean. Y'all might be like, Mel, girl, please look at this mess behind you. Honey, if I had room to put this away, I would. But I think I've explained to you guys before in the past, there ain't no point in putting up most of this stuff because I use it every night. But anyway, the house was clean. I'm over decorating. Everything is decorated to the point where I think it should be. I just put it around the house and I had this bright idea that I wanted to fill some of my empty picture frames with photos. I have a couple of empty picture frames in my gallery going up the stairs. I have a couple of empty uh, yellow picture frames in my yellow enamel of my collection. I have a couple of picture frames of those empty. And I'm like, you know what? Go through all your photos um, and find something that'll fit in there. So I'm going through photos and I got really happy with some, really sad with others. And by the end of it, I was exhausted um, emotionally. There's, there are so many pictures in there of people that have passed, family, friends that are gone. And I'm just like, why did I do this to myself? And there was one picture in particular that really almost sent me into a tailspin. It's my mom with her siblings. Well, the siblings who had stayed alive for a little longer than others. But there's a picture of uh, one of the last photos she took of her and her siblings. And she's the only one left. And that just broke my heart. And I ain't been right since. And then I found a bunch of pictures of Melinda. And and I have pictures of Melinda in my house. Um, but there's so many pictures of me and Melinda cutting up and being silly and being here and being there. And so many memories, guys. It messed me up. So I put that aside. Okay, we ain't gonna do that. And I decided to come make some dinner. So that's what I'm doing now. But I'm doing it backwards. Yeah, the broccoli has been done. It turned this sad, sad color. Um, I'm just going to reheat the cheese sauce from yesterday. We had a little bit of cheese sauce left over, and we're going to drizzle that over. I'm going to have to re-steam this real quick. It's still nice and crunchy. There's still a good crunch to it, but I had it on the flame too long. First thing I started, a little bit. So now the house stinks. But at least the meatloaf will make the house smell better. But... I guess little dude's dinner would cook faster if I turned the heat up. I had it on low. While I was over there mixing the meatloaf, I had his meat cooking. And I'm like, why isn't the rice sizzling? It's stupid because you don't have it on the right heat. But anyway, I'm going to get his rice uh, started and simmering. And then I'm going to get the sauce for the meatloaf going. So on to the sauce. I do a small can of tomato sauce. Now I'm usually not picky at all about brands, guys, at all. But when I make meatloaf, I'll use Hunt's because that's all my mom swore by. She was kind of a tomato, but not so much now. But back in the day, she was kind of a tomato sauce snob, okay? 
So I stick with that. I do a little bit of water just to rinse the inside of the can out because you don't want no watery sauce. Pour that in. Okay. At this point, you add some mustard. I start off slow because it can get real bitter. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I'm so immature. <laughs> but stir in some mustard. Now, I know some people like a sweeter sauce. Um, if you want to add brown sugar, you can add brown sugar. If you want to add molasses, you can add molasses. I had a tia aunt, that's aunt, who would do maple syrup. I kid you guys not. I kid y'all not. She did ketchup and a little bit of maple syrup. I ain't gonna lie. It was okay. But sometimes se le pasaba la mano. Um, uh, she'd get heavy handed with the syrup. And it was just odd. But this by no means is a sweet sauce. Uh, it's... It's, it's tangy, so if you don't like tangy, don't do not do this. Okay, I still only taste tomato. So I'm going to add just a teeny tiny bit more. What is the deal? Okay, of mustard, just about that much. Now this is my mom's recipe. Like I said, I have tried to do it exactly like she did it, but maybe it's because she's also an eyeballer. She never measured, so she couldn't tell me a teaspoon of this, a tablespoon of that. She just eyeballed. And my eyeball don't work like her eyeball because I can't get it right. I can't. Let's taste it again. That's very familiar. I'm gonna stop right there because we're still gonna add Pickle juice. It's going to be so hard for me to open these dang pickles and not eat one. But now I got to be careful here too. Just to sploosh. Hijo de eso. I think that was way too much. Ugh. Like my auntie. Se me pasó la mano. I was heavy handed. I mean I like pickles but not everybody here does. So... Oh, no, it's okay. I'm actually going to take a sippy sippy from the spoon just to be sure that all the flavors hit me in the back of my throat. And I'm not excited that I didn't over pickle. No, mm, that's good. You can taste every little thing. You can taste the mustard. A little bit of pickle. I'm surprised I can't taste more of the pickle. But, yeah, that's pretty darn good. So that's the sauce we're going to drizzle over the meatloaf in about 10-15 um, minutes. I'll drizzle this on top and let it cook the rest of the way. So in the meantime, in between time, I'm going to drop these taters into this water. Because now they're going to have to start boiling all over again. And I think I timed it well enough. that they shouldn't completely dissolve before I can mash them. Take some of this water out so it don't boil over. Add some salt. Give it a stir. Get back to boiling. Have y'all ever been told not to throw away the potato water or rice water that it's good for your skin? Have you? Have you? Hmm? Cannonball. We are going to do a couple of things. We're going to check the internal temperature, see if anything is going on. Make sure it's cooking in there. Okay, it's at 160, 180. We wanna let it get a little more cooked in the center for sure. 
But I gotta drain this bad boy. Okay? We gotta drain him. Tilt and suck it out. Anyway, this is my least favorite part. What a mess. And now we are going to pour all of this lovely sauce right over it. Okay, and slide it right back in there for about another 20-25 minutes. Look at all the nasty grease. Look at all the nasty grease. Now I gotta clean up. Gonna check these taters and see if they're fork tender. Stop fighting me. they are it's mashed patootie time y'all okay so there are my taters so there are my taters and in here I have margarine and milk I'm actually gonna dump in my margarine first and get to mashing y'all know how to make mashed potatoes don't y'all? Some of y'all? I can tell right away that is not enough margarine. I am not a happy potato girl unless my friggin' potatoes are dang near yellow. Salt. Perfect on the salt. Pour in the milk because I love a soft whipped creamy tater. At this point, I swap out to my whisk. Sometimes I'll do the hand, be hand beater, but if you go too long with a hand beater, I've noticed the texture on them changes. Changes some kind of way. They feel kind of grainy, so I stick with my masher and my whip. And this, honestly, is not soft enough for me. A sploosh more milk. When I tell y'all I like them creamy, I am not lying to y'all. Why would I lie to y'all? Hmm? Hmm? At this point, they could use a little more salt. And I've noticed that once I start adding the milk in it, the salt disappears a bit. And honestly, I think one more sploosh of milk and I will be good. Look at that, guys. Look at that texture. Look at that soft fluffiness. Ah. Yummy. Y'all don't understand me and my love of mashed taters. Y'all just don't know. And she is ready. Yum, yum. Delish, delish. The poor broccoli was cooked to Hades and back, but we got some cheesy salsa to make it better and it is dinner time only thing missing 
our biscuits. I didn't even think about making biscuits and I've been talking about biscuits. I didn't make any biscuits and I didn't have any rolls. So I just cut up the last of the hoagie rolls into bun size portions, but it's time to eat. I definitely should have waited to slice it because it wasn't just set to make perfect slices, but it doesn't matter. It's yummy. It's delicious. So if y'all try it, guys, bon appetit, y'all. I was going to have a drinky drink, a little uh, Jack Daniels punch, but my body hurts. I'm tired. I think this will have a better effect on me. We're going to try it got my sugar and my tea bag in there. This tea bag smells like raisin bread. It smells like fruit cake. It smells definitely of the season. Hush now. Hush, I tells you. I don't want too big a mug. So I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but we're going to let that steep for a bit. And we're going to sit and end this video. You guys, I'm so friggin' tired. Dinner was a success. It turned out really, really well. I was quite proud of my little meatloafs. Quite proud. Let me stabilize y'all. Y'all are wiggling a little. Better? Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. My back is hurting. My legs are tired. I'm wore out. But it was a good dinner. You guys. I made my potatoes tonight. And one of the best and funniest memories I have of Melinda involved the mashed potatoes. If you guys have been with me a while, y'all might remember the video, um, we made two videos, one back to back. Uh, she was spending the night after I'd had some get together. I don't remember if it was 4th of July or what. But um, she was spending the night and I talked her into doing a thrift video with me because we had gone thrifting earlier that day. And it was the first time she had ever tried mashed potato sandwiches. And she was double fisted with them. She, she, she loved them. And today in particular, for maybe because I was thinking about her so much earlier, when I was making the mashed potatoes, I remembered that, and I was really sad earlier remembering her, but the mashed potatoes cheered me up. <laughs> ah, but yeah, I'm in here trying to do the last bit of putting away, which are some of the pictures that um, uh, did put me in that state, and I wanted to show y'all the ones that made me sad. I'm not going to get sad again, guys, but it's just so y'all get a better idea of what makes me tick, what makes me move, what moves me. Um, y'all know I'm sentimental. Y'all know I'm a big mush. But yeah, these are the pictures that really got me. Um, in regards to my family, this is my Aunt Esther and my Uncle Hector. And they both passed two years ago, 10 days apart from each other. Um, the the sickness that's going around i don't know if youtube allows us to use it anymore i don't know but the sickness that was going around um he caught it and then she caught it and they went 10 days apart from each other they were awesome um this is one of my favorite pictures of the siblings but it's also the one that kind of messed me up it's an old Polaroid. There's my mama. There's my uncle Renee, my aunt Billy, and my aunt Gloria. And they're gone. She's uh, passed away a few years ago. And she was big dude's godmother. Amazing lady. And this one is the one that just broke me down because he's the most recent. I think he's the most recent. Yes, he's the most recent of the man. Of the men, yes. This is the one that broke me down the most. This was my mom's 60th birthday. She can look so silly sometimes. Uh, it was her 60th birthday and we had given her a surprise party and all her family came out. So there's my Uncle Hector, there's my Aunt Billy, and there's my Aunt Gloria. And this is the one that just messed me up, tore me up because he's the most recent. 
and um, I think of my aunts, not to say anything against any other aunt I have, but this one was the most heartbreaking for me because she did play such a huge part in my big dude's life growing up. But yeah, this one is the one that messed me up. Uh, this is my grandma. Okay, my grandma Alexandra, my uncle Sonny, and my aunt Billy all gone. My grandma was 85. And if y'all see me cooking with the comal or the molcajete, the mortar and pestle, that old black griddle, they belong to her. She gave them to my mama and my mama gave them to me. So she is the reason I hold on really, really dear to, really, really close to all that stuff. And then this picture, oh, I love this picture. They became little girls. It's my aunt and my mom at Corpus Christi frolicking in the waves. <laughs> Look at them. Isn't that adorable? That is just so cute. They became little girls that day. I remember this was so many years ago. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to show any pictures of Melly because I'll get upset again probably. But I think you guys have seen lots of pictures of Melly. And if you're friends of me with me on Facebook, you guys have seen her there a whole lot. But I'm going to take these pictures to my mama. I don't know if I want I want her to see them because I think she'll enjoy seeing them. But I don't want to make her sad. I don't want to make her sad, but yeah, she's the oldest and she, she's still here and all of the others are gone. And I don't like to say that because it sounds as if though my mom should have gone first. That's not what I mean. It's just the irony because most people expect or prepare for the oldest to go first. And that wasn't the case in the family. Before I take a sippy sip of this tea, let me show you guys. Y'all have heard me talk about allergies and allergies and allergies and anaphylactic reaction and having to have a shot and having to be careful about what I eat. I found some pictures of an anaphylactic reaction. Now, mind you, I am cochetona, um, cheeky, I'm fluffy. Okay, I got a fluffy face. So y'all may not be able to tell the difference. But I came across these pictures and I'm like, oh, I remember this one. I had been in the hospital for two days. Two days, guys. And uh, my eyes finally opened and I was able to breathe on my own. So they sent me home. And this is what I come home looking like, guys. This one was the worst one where they thought they were going to have to trach me. Look what happens. Look what happens when I get into a fruit or a dye I'm not supposed to get into. <laughs> that ain't funny. Why am I laughing? But can you really tell the difference? Can y'all tell the difference? No, really. But, um, yeah, that one was a bad one. We had gone to the state fair and I had consumed way too many things. Apparently, nitrites and preservatives and food dyes. You know, they put yellow food dye in the corn on the cob and the, the batter for the corn on the, uh, the corny dog. They put yellow bad, yellow dye in the water for the corn to keep it bright. And then they put a nitrite in to keep it nice and bright. And then in the corny dogs, they drop in a yellow food coloring for the batter to be yellow. And I, and then in the funnel cake, they do the same thing. And I ingested all of those things. And it was way too much of the nitrite in, in particular, the nitrite and yellow number. I can't remember what yellow. I made it home and I started feeling really, really bad. And I just made it to the emergency room with my big dude. He was little. And um, they advised me I needed to call somebody. They thought they were going to have to intubate me and get me into, you know, they were going to have to treat me quick. And big dude was only like eight or nine years old at the time. And uh, they were like, do you have anybody you can call to come and stay with him? Because they didn't have anybody to take care of a little boy. And he was freaking out. Uh, so I ended up calling my uncle. And he comes over and I could not convince him that I had not gotten beat up. He was convinced, you guys, I was, this is nothing, okay, this, this is two days, this is day two, after they sent me home. Oh, that smells delicious. Um, he was not convinced, he couldn't be convinced that somebody hadn't beat me up. Who's, who did it to you, and you need to tell me, and he was going to go all vigilante gangster. I'm like, no, the doctors and the nurses had to explain to them that this is a reaction to an allergen. This, this is deadly, this, she could have died. Uh, but yeah. But thought I'd share that with y'all. Those freaked me out. And I come across them every now and then when I'm digging around in my pictures. And I always think it's 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 funny now. But it's not funny when it happens. But anywho, let's take a sippy sip of this tea. And then we'll call it a day, y'all. Or a night. It's almost bedtime for everybody. 
This smells really, really good. I smell vanilla. Oh, I'm kind of marshmallow. I don't know what that is, but I definitely smell some vanilla in here. Let's see. I can only give me. I'll see my glasses. Hmm. Needs a smidgen more sugar. Oh. I swear my neck just unwound. I gotta have a little more sugar. Hang on. I know. Y'all worry about me and my diabeticals. I know. I just added one more teaspoon. It's pretty full. So I added one more teaspoon to that. What is that flavor? It's so yummy. I guess I could have read the box, huh? It it gives Christmas pastry. It smells like Christmas cookies and fruit cake and raisin bread and bread pudding. Mm. Oh, that is so nice. But you don't lose that black tea. You don't lose it. The black tea is there with just these little dancing hints of Christmas happy flavors. Oh, I swear my neck is just unwinding. Uh. Mm. That's really good. I don't, I mean, I can kind of see eggnog, but I get more baked goods. But yeah, let me think about, let me think about it in the eggnog sense. Okay. Okay. In the back right here, I get a little bit of milk. I get a little bit of cream, a little bit of milk. Okay. Okay. It's really good, guys. If y'all... Have that brand anywhere and y'all are into the nice spice warm soothing Christmas it's it's kind of more on the side of a chai I mean I know chai means tea but of that spiced chai it kind of it kind of gives that that vibe but not as concentrated as a chai but it's good so I'm gonna sippy sip on this I'm gonna go get comfy on the sofa I'm going to Put away my photo project until tomorrow sometime. And um, I will talk to you guys very soon. I hope you guys had an incredible Tuesday. Oh, I've got to keep sippy sipping. Mm. And I hope you guys roll into a wonderful Wednesday. Oh, and if weather's going to change near your neck of the woods, quédate pendiente. Be aware of what's going on. Weather can change on a dime. We're supposed to get some weather. So just stay aware, stay comfortable, stay safe. And until my next go around, you guys, I love your punches. Bye.